I'm Miguel D. Fortes. I'm a retired professor of marine science of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. So what I do is uh, basically starting with the basic aspects of plant ecology in the sea and then now in a way branching out into an application of that science to help conserve the coastal environment of the country. When it comes to awareness of the seagrass, there is a saying that uh, when it comes to the coastal ecosystems, especially in the tropics, coral reefs are the most popular, mangroves the most disturbed, and seagrass beds the least studied. It is really the least studied, but in terms of area, we now know that, for example, in the Philippines, we have about 27,000 hectares of that, and it's almost equal the estimated amount of aerial cover of coral reefs. Around the world, we have uh, about 60 species globally, but in the Philippines, we have 19 species. Seagrasses are flowering plants that have true flowers, true stems, true leaves. But seaweeds, they do not have true roots, stems, and leaves, and they don't really flower the way we know that plants flower. They're very primitive, the seaweeds. Seagrass is just like the grass that you commonly see outside. The only difference is that it completes its life history submerged under the sea. Just that. Now, it is very important, especially nowadays, because it was discovered that they sequester carbon dioxide from the air. That is the latest that we know about the importance of seagrass. The normal functions or importance of the seagrass is just like, for example, we know that it is a nursery and feeding grounds of fish and other invertebrates, which is economically important. They protect the coast very effectively.